here. Already in progress. <laughs> Sweet. That that's so, so that a lot of people will actually. Uh oh, you're on camera now. Um, Not bad. That that a lot of people will um, put in their applications there. Does that make sense? We've definitely gotten the most response. You have the more people to choose from if you use that. Okay. We've just been like when you're searching for it, we look at okay, what is the going rate for whatever position you're hiring for? Do you know what I mean? It's like oh, people are doing it in this one. You can throw it in your range or whatever you want to do um there's uh you know you can do personality tests um those work really good too um cool. they can submit their resumes and all that stuff to you the way indeed works so also how you know is you pay for uh so how do you put it the good ones does that make sense so you have a certain amount of time okay like, it, let's just say you get 60 applicants right sure. but but if you look at it, you have a X amount of time to like basically deny them, then you don't have to pay for it. Oh, D does that make sense? So how I did it is any of the ones that I actually interviewed, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, that's fair. I should pay you for that one. Technically you could screw them over and say none of them and not pay them, but you know, what comes around goes around. So you don't really want to do that either, but yeah. The ones that I interviewed, you know what I mean? So let's just say if I interviewed eight of them, you know what I mean? And I found the person I wanted to hire. Well, then I would go in there and I would basically decline all the other ones, um, like not accept them. And so mm -hmm. accept those eight and then I'm just billed for that. And is that like five bucks a person or what does that add up to in it on average, you know? Uh, that's a great question. I'm trying to remember because it's been a while since we used that to hire anybody. It's probably been a year since I've used it. So I'm not a hundred percent on the price. That's, that's good odds though. Read, read it in there. But, um, but I did get hosed one time cause I didn't know. That's why I'm telling you that if you don't decline it, you get charged it. And it cost me about 1200 bucks by the time I was done with it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that one again. Yikes. Uh, and then when you sign up for it, make sure, you, they'll, they'll say, well, do you want, uh, do you want your clinic to be top of the list? You know what I mean? Like it's like paid advertising, right? Uh, don't do that either. You'll get plenty of applicants, right? And they charge you a buttload for that too. Okay. Not worth it. Yeah. I'm just looking for someone a little bit more tech savvy than I currently have. Then so. definitely you throw that in there, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because if they don't have that, then you don't even really want to interview them because you want that. You know, right. Well, it's it's like Jane app is all online. Right. And so yeah. the, my current person uh, makes way too many mistakes because I had to train her in everything online. And she's not I would consider her technologically disabled. <laughs> but I'm okay. like, it's kind of okay, like me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's running this. <laughs> we got it to work. Nice. Hey, cool. All right. So hopefully that helps out. Yeah. yeah. And if you have any other questions, I mean, let me know for sure. You know, you, you can text me, reach out anytime. Okay. Sounds good. We were just talking about like hiring. He had questions on like, where do we go for it? We found the best result with doing Indeed. Yeah. Because my first employee was kind of given to me because the gym owner and I were like, hey, he needs a front desk and so do I. Why don't we go <laughs> oh, half seas on it? And then he ended up picking the person. I didn't get a say in it. And now I'm like, now, uh, if either I pick the person I want or, <laughs> or I'm just going to pay for them myself. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Let me see if we can share the screen well, here real quick. Yeah, I don't know. Is it too far away to pick up the mic? Probably we set it here, then there's a better. That's true. We don't have to. I mean, I don't care. Um, but, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that was, yeah. that was the only thing we talked about so far. Any response from Kelly or anything? You sent it over to him? I did send it to him. Yeah, yeah. And I know he got it because he, he texted me back. Yeah. So if we do that, maybe I won't be able to do it today. You want me to text him real quick? Uh, maybe I'll just on. try to do it next time. So this, I will work on, work on that out next time. Okay. I'll text. Yeah, so we know the links work now, but that's obviously, you know, because Dr. Yeah. Porter set it up and it wasn't me. Technologically disabled, just like Dr. Yeah. I had a lot more Zoom classes in college than you did. So. <laughs> that's that's true. Okay. 
I feel like I did everything right last time, but it just said it didn't say anything. It just wouldn't click. It's like lunch meeting, lunch <laughs> meeting, lunch meeting. I'm like, I won't hey, lunch that, meeting. <laughs> that means he's semi disabled. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Totally, totally. Today worse than worse than Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> I we'll just have to pull up the guy or the the update list on that um, laptop today. That's okay. All right. So um, the next time I'll figure out. He's how to... not. I mean, I know because he, he texted me last night. You know, on it when I sent it over to him during the day. He texted back, so I was up to the MPI call. And I said yes, and so I know he's got it. Um, but who want to? I mean, we can even have um, so I mean, the order start with the. Um, do a here. Okay, first off, yeah. Great. Yeah, first I'd like to hear some cool stories and then some questions and then then get into the update stuff. Sounds See perfect. If there's something that really fits that situation or not. Perfect. <clears throat> it always those good ones. What do you what are you seeing? I've been seeing all sorts of stuff right now. Um Let's see. That's a couple of good ones. I've had two hyperemesis gravidarum cases that have just been home runs. I saw them twice, and both of them were like, nope, don't have any more. I'm like, I'm happy <laughs> for you. Area Postrema was one of the main ones that I did on one of them, and hers was like 90% gone from that one. <laughs> and then um, I think we did some vestibular area because she had mentioned that's when she stands up. So I was like, maybe it's went to the vestibular and then I fixed it. So I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and the other person I've, I've currently just done area postrema and I haven't seen her a second time, but she sent a text and she's like, I haven't been sick in two days. This is fantastic. So that's a good start there. Um, I've done a lot of sports injuries recently, sprained ankles, relatively simply the myokines are still just knocking most what i used to consider or what i still would consider aim at treatments i think the myokines are just blowing them out of the park you do one or two treatments with a myokine and they're they're, they're good so i'm gonna have a good response with those um i suppose the most difficult one i'm still having the only difficult one really that keeps coming back and we're getting very little to no headway is that stinking nine-year-old who has trigeminal neuralgia and we've tried all sorts of stuff all sorts of stuff and they're like you've helped you're the only person who's 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 helped it all but it's still it just comes in waves and each treatment is better but worse but the same all in the same time because she used to have it only along the trigeminal nerve bilaterally and then after we got the trigeminal nerve treated she still has it only on the medial branch here and then she has it up around the back of her ears bilaterally and then now in the last two to three probably three weeks it has gone down her neck she now feels tingling in her fingers um, and, and it goes down her spine, apparently, into her shoulder blades to the, to the apex of the scapula bilaterally. And I'm like, what? What, what happened? Like, what? <laughs> so that one's incredibly frustrating. I don't know. Have you tried treating it with a uh, virus, a vial? We don't have, I don't have vials down here. Been waiting to find out how to get some, where to get some, but that's what we talked about a couple months ago. Last time we did this call was we got to find a way to get vials out. I don't think they're ever ordered. That's why we don't have them. We just need them. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's of my knowledge. That's the only reason why I haven't done vials. Cause I don't have any. But that's. She's been treated for before, the. Uh, trigeminal neuralgia kicked on early in March. She had a sinus infection and swimmer's ear within three weeks before. And they said the sinus infection was bacterial, the swimmer's ear was bacterial. They gave her antibiotics and those went away. But then two, two weeks later, the trigeminal neuralgia kicked on.
So. I would agree. The last two treatments we've done have all been uh, meningeal immunity, and that throws it for such a loop every time. She says something to the effect of, the day that the rest of that day was fantastic, but then the three to four days following is hell. She she can't sleep at night. She feels random pains in her jaw at one time and it goes away for five minutes. And that's in her shoulder for five minutes. And her dad was like, well, I had, um, um, what's it called? It's not fibro. What, what did they diagnose him with? MS. MS. They diagnosed him with MS years ago, but he hasn't had any problems with it in a while. And so he's like, oh, she might be getting MS like I had MS. And I'm like, why is she nine years old having any symptoms similar to? The what? She's had MRIs. She's had CTs. Nothing, nothing shows up in anything. She has an appointment with the primary children's hospital up north, um, I think on the 17th of September or something like that. So they've had that appointment because they're like, no, it's, it's helped and we're still coming because it seems to change and you're the only one that seems to be able to move it or manipulate or, or change and, and influence, I suppose is a better word, influence the pain, but it's still just... I can't hear. Speak up. You have to schedule an appointment with me. I should have them come up there while they're up there. I can see if I can find something else out. Okay, and maybe you use a vial as well since you have them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A fun story. Back to a positive thing, I suppose. There was a gentleman. Um, who fractured his fibula and tibia because, uh, what, uh, th three months ago. And he, went, he rolled his ankle, and I guess he rolled it so bad that his body just shut down, and he passed out because of how bad he rolled his ankle. When he passed out, his whole body weight fell on his ankle and fractured both bones, dislocated his talus, and he had a full-on... Um, sympathetic response when he crapped his shorts and wet himself and the whole shebang and he's like I don't know what how or why but the docs were like uh, the surgeon was like you'll probably be able to get walking again within the next six months and hopefully you'll have 50% use in your ankle within the next three three or so years and he's been coming to see me religiously um, every week and he to, uh, yesterday he came for the eighth time and in eight visits he's been jogging back in the gym zero pain um he's like i have new prs and most of my things from even before I, my fracture and so that's been super good for him he's had a very uh, sp a spiritual response in addition to the muscle stuff that He's like, I used to chew, and I don't know what this stuff is doing, but he's like, I used to chew. I don't chew anymore. Got rid of that bad habit. I, I have been eating a lot healthier. I've been moving a lot more. I've been exercising. So he's like, I don't know what your pressure points are doing, but they have literally changed my life. And he's, he's a big fan of, of coming in. He sends, he sends everyone talks up NPI like you would not believe. Yeah, his, his is a super cool case. It's not picking up you. Hold on. What'd you say? I'm asking these guys if they've got anything to share. Oh. Okay.
<laughs> better? Yeah, I think the mic just, if it's a little softer, doesn't pick you up. Because I could hear Rollin just fine. I'm loud. <laughs> My voice doesn't carry from what I'm told. Plus, I mumble like crazy, so here we go. Uh, <clears throat> I've been finding that sometimes, like, left-sided problems are stomach problems. Or what problems? Like stomach. Oh, okay. Yeah. An organ problem on one side, you know, on one side. Mm -hmm. It has issues, like, globally on one side. I've been finding. Okay, it's good to know because I have had quite a few people. It's always my left side is the problem, or always my right side is the problem. Yeah. Typically, when I think of right or left sides, I will typically ask about the corpus callosum. We get positive headway there. Is that accurate? Yeah. So I've done that. Um, I would still do that, you know. Yeah. But sometimes it seems to come down to that. As well. Cool. So, um, and then learned a lot of that from Dr. Porter. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, now I think I, I got into three categories, like everybody has that stuff. It's either internal, uh, organ stuff going on like uh doing a lot of uh off, uh you know, for that and then i'm doing a lot of thyroid with the connections to the thyroid pituitary hypothalamus just getting labs and so we're getting labs back and they're all changing um love it which is awesome and i'm doing a lot of tremors and um uh, I do a lot of mental health. I do a lot of anxiety. It seems like everybody's getting referred in. They pretty much have one of those three things on me now. Yeah. Kind of cool because mm -hmm. it's like, where else would you send them to get that? Like, I don't even know where I'd send you, but we're... that's the cool part. Even in that first visit, they already get off the table and they're different. Yeah. It's fun to see a lot of that stuff. Yeah, there's a... a husband who comes to see me the wife goes to see you because she had a great experience is like nothing against you but i'm i'll travel to dr rollins <laughs> and uh, his her husband has uh, water retention significant water retention and i've had two other cases of water retention we treat the kidneys and it goes away almost within you know two weeks two treatments two three treatments um but this guy um he has had no improvement whatsoever. We've done um, pancreas, we've done adrenals, and we've done kidney. And then I started working stomach, and that seemed to help other things. He's like, well, this shoulder pain I had is gone, and this pain I had is gone, and but we haven't been able to touch any of that water retention. Yeah. Uh, Eric Donna's uh, mom. This is the same guy, uh, Brock, who I texted you earlier about. This is probably a month ago now uh, that he does uh, premature ejaculation. So I don't know if that has any ties, but I consider them two separate beasts. Well, uh, paraventricular nucleus and drive that and ADH and the which one? So it makes antidiuretic hormones, right? okay, and it's like the sympathetic portion of okay. You said that was what one more time, paraventricular. <laughs> There is a connection with the ONIF as well. There is. Um, and possibly the PMC. But... 
You cut off that last little bit. Would you repeat that one? The OVLT, a lot of its function is um, fluid balance and uh, blood pressure, homeostasis. Okay. That's how things are going to get into the hypothalamus. So. I have a separate question that's kind of un uh, more related to, um, I don't know, description, um, advertising, because I'm not uh, trained in and uh, technically certified in NAET, would it be inaccurate to say that I can do NPI allergy treatments if we called it that? Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, then you're not going to be any issues with uh, with Nambrutapad because you're not saying it's her technique. That's what I assume, right? I can just claim an NPI allergy, stick it on my website, and start advertising that too because. I've been hitting some good allergy stuff, and this is super easy, <laughs> but I can't advertise it anywhere because I'm like, well, I don't want to get kicked in the butt by advertising NAET. Are you, you just say allergy NAET? elimination. What'd you say, Dr. Rollin? Are you doing NAET, or are you doing it through, like, the way that uh, Dr. Perry first <laughs> came up with the treating allergies? I've been, it depends with, um, if they're like, oh, I forgot to tell you at the end of this treatment that... Um, I have an allergy. I'll just do the clicker real fast, the NAT way, because I only have five minutes. I'm like, hey, keep that on at 15 minutes and see what happens. If it doesn't work, then come back in and we'll get it really done for a treatment of its own. Uh, I've, I've found a lot more success, honestly. I, I rarely do NAT way now. I mean, it's, yeah. there. it's a tool in the bag, but the way that Baron came up with it is like, that's worked so good through agreed. whatever half cells, however, right? Yeah, uh, agreed. Yeah, no, I, I think you're totally valid to call it anything like that. I don't think anybody's going to come after you at all. Okay, because most of these other things that we're kind of branching off of NPI is parts of NPI, but I can't, not that I can't, um, the patient doesn't understand what, I, what can be treated if we don't call it something like NPI allergy or NPI whatever. And, and I don't know if we just start throwing that so I can slap it on the website and advertise that way. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, allergy elimination. Okay. Elimination. That's nice and vague. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, what other questions you got? I don't know. I should have written them all down. But most of the time, I just text Dr. Farron. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good source. Yeah. I, I text him a lot, too. Yeah. <laughs> he knows it's true. He's not saying nothing, see? No, no, <laughs> He's like, yeah, he does. Like some... <laughs> <laughs> Have we heard from uh, Brad at all, Farron? No. No, nothing? Okay, well. Hello, um, man. I might okay. just start looking for someone on the side then because yeah. I've been getting busy enough that I want to start looking for someone and have them hired probably by the end of this year. Oh, no. i just say, hey, man. Yeah. Window opportunity is closing, and I will assume you are not interested. Yeah. I, well, I mean, he graduated, what, three weeks ago, so he's probably right. already found a spot by now, I would assume, because you want a job post-grad. Oh, I have a – this is a little bit of a separate tangent as well. My brain is a little bit everywhere at the moment. 
Um, now that Alec is working for Dr. Bueller, I catch some of the grapevine information from Alec. And apparently what's going through the grapevine is, um, I was going to ask this morning, but he's not on the call. Um, Dr. Farmer, apparently, from what Bueller seems to believe, Dr. Farmer has dropped all VORs and um, AP, MAP points with muscle treatment now. I don't know if that's accurate, but he's only doing origin insertion and leaving them on their way. That's just what's getting around to Bueller for some reason. I don't know who or how, but. All in six. He's pretty quick at doing it all. I can't imagine if you drop it, but. Yeah, he's so. naked on the call. That's what he texts me. He says, is, is this a monthly thing? Do I need to put it on my calendar? I told him yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Is Dr. Tolman uh, able to make the call as well or no? Uh, by now, I think you're it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Besides us. Now we're talking. According to Beardall, though, you actually don't really need to do visceral organ reflex number two. Okay. Like if some, uh, those are usually the ones that are in like the weird places on females. Yeah. In weird places on females, I usually just don't do them. Okay. Don't touch it, but if it absolutely needs to happen. Uh, the most important is the R one and map. I think that just kind of goes to personal. I, I mean, I've been doing like, this stuff for 20 years. I do it all, but I'm, I'm an, I'm an anal guy that I'm like, you just follow the steps. I don't, I don't want a shortcut. I'm just like, I just do it, but you've got to do what's right for your head. That's what's right in my head that sure. I'm like, no, cause then I just know a surety that I, boom, I nailed that. So when I'm telling that patient, Hey, I got it. I'm not saying it doesn't work that way, but when I tell them that I 100% believe that inside me that I'm like, I knocked that out. Sure. Um, that's why I'm, I'm really hesitant when somebody comes in, if they show up with the same thing, I will rarely ever do that again, unless there's been some type of injury. Cause I'm like, no, I know I nailed that. There's yeah. something. I'm going deeper on you to figure yeah. out. Uh, I mean, I'm confident in that, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, but again, I'm not saying that the way that, um, that Dr. Bennett believes on that is wrong. I'm just giving you, again, there's going to be always different opinions. That's, that's, that's me. That's what feels right for me. Yeah, I just didn't know. It was more of a, um, because I'm, I'm, I think I, I relate more with your idea of I, I would rather just do it just to make sure for the sake of mental comfort, if you will. I was more, I bring that as this up just to say that this is what Bueller is hearing, and now Bueller has completely written off. Um, Dr. Farmer's ability to effectively do aim it. He probably had already done that just with the lawsuit. Yeah. With all the other stuff. I, I, I will say we are going through and we're, and we're, we're, um, I don't want to say correcting, but we are in a sense, we're making it better. So all those other muscles that are on that muscle detail that I had to find out how to do. I mean, I, I know the mindset that I was in when I was going through and defining that and I'm pretty clear. I was pretty sure like you do all of them. That's how I felt it. Okay. Uh, and then we're changing it now because the other issue I have is the whole lymphatic thing. Lymphatics run down both sides. That's the conversation I had with Bueller before. He basically yeah. told me that I'm not wrong on that, that it this should be both sides, but he's not going back and messing with changing it. <laughs> not worth the, not worth tackling the beast. Nothing. So what we are doing is we're changing in all the stuff that we're doing. So we're very specific, which ones are bilateral, which things are unilateral. Cause some of the, uh, the VORs is actually going to be a unilateral on the one side. And so Dr. Porter and I have been working together to kind of get that totally cleaned up and then we'll, so it's, it's coming. And so basically we're making it better. You take what you have, but we're going to tweak it. Um, and that's the same thing with a couple of things on, on the MPI. Uh, originally you, you go with the knowledge that you have at that time. So sure. originally, Stuff that I did for the pituitary, for example, it's got to be redone. Now, it's okay. not do anything because it did, but there's a better way to do it with the knowledge we have now. So sure. I started to redo those. 
so the first one is up on the update sheet and that's anterior pituitary dealing with the TSH production. Uh, that's the best way to do it, not through the other one. So as we correct those, I mean, we'll, we'll have a discussion as do we just pull the other ones off so there's no confusion and this is the best one to do or do you just leave it all on there? I mean, we'll, we'll figure that out, but uh, yeah. we're definitely cleaning it up now that we have better knowledge. Cool. I really like the organization as well. It helps my brain. <clears throat> All right. So get into updates. <clears throat> so this is start at the top again. <clears throat> so um, ocular, ocular, extraocular eye muscles for Christmas cases and stuff. Frustrating. Like they'll move, but they won't stay in the right place to begin with. So I was thinking, hey, maybe it's a proprioceptive problem. They don't have much in this. Um, they have something called palisade neurons that function as a like and they may also have some motor functions as well. So. So do them on the person that I have done one before. Uh, but we also have convergence problems. Um, there's two branches for each of the nerves, right? Abducens nerve, oculomotor nerve, broken nerve. We just have the abducens oculomotor right now. Um, that helped him. That kind of clarified some of the stuff that was he didn't, wasn't grossly wrong anymore, but it was a little bit off. That finishes up what's considered the rostral dorsal. So like the ones up there to the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, uh, the, again, that's the center in front of the brain is gonna deal with all different types of emotions. Um, so the rest of that, there's four, uh, I would say then you take that section and then you divide it up into four different compartments. Uh, rostral dorsal was one of those and that one's now complete with the ones. So now I'll start moving into the other three. I already have them listed out as to like what the, what the divisions are, what they go to. I just have to go through and actually define them all out now. But these ones, by far, I've just, I mean, some of the severest cases you'll ever see of, of anxiety and mental health, like it's gone. Like this is what finished it. And that's why I went into that because I knew that's what that person needed. And yeah. if, um, there's Same a lot here. of other different, different uh, there's actions on all of them when you read it uh, to help you kind of get an idea of when it plays in. in. Um, so you'll see that we try to be way more detailed in the new stuff we add in. And, 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 you know, we're still going back and kind of fixing some of the old stuff, but uh, so there's that, that'll complete that second. Cool. I have been lost in Yesterday, someone couldn't walk on their knee all of a sudden. Again, that was clean, but it's all emotionally driven. Those are two of them. I've actually found that a few times where I'll treat something emotionally and it <laughs> full on fixes a bodily is that do you just ask while you're doing your muscle test or is there something that kind of leads you to to ask more specifically for an emotional component that one was easier because she's she was kind of in because of anxiety depression and then okay we heard at the same time and it kind of came out of nowhere no okay. real reason mm -hmm. so and i was like okay or are they just they're they related to each other and then yeah and then, okay, okay. What's the thing we needed to bring that back and whatnot? And that one I actually went through. I was like, okay, so here's because there's there's a ton of emotions. So I was like, okay, I try to like narrow this down. I got it down to like a little empathy on like old memory stuff like it's coming up, and then there's like this betrayal, frustration thing going on. Um, and those kind of were all together right and then i was seeing hey which ones are going to change this knee function so then i found out it brought back like other times if they're not telling me about an emotion 
sit there and how because I'm like, okay, well, is the knee pain will not sound normal? It'll be like, oh, I don't know, it just start hurting here, or there, and there's no real cause or reason. The muscle, brain, whatever, find brain stuff, and then I'll kind of start whittling it down. And then if it comes down to like a frontal lobe thing or like the locus ceruleus or something, I was like, well, you start something or whatever. And that's how I find it. And if they seem like a rather inactive <laughs> person, <laughs> Maybe emotional and a lot of pain. I'll... <laughs> or if they just seem like an anxious person, or something like that, I might ask. Might ask him there, and then just be like, "Hey, I'm, I'm only asking because sometimes these other things that turn off, and so that that may be actually important for us." People get really defensive when you start asking about the emotions. I found out. <laughs> maybe I haven't had too much of that, but I maybe it's been how you frame it a little bit. Okay. I don't ever ask any details. Um and I kind of preface it that so they know I'm not trying to dig into things and be like, hey, um I don't need to know anything in particular. Um like, hey, you're kind of taking the two an emotional part of your brain, like is this I'm just trying to make sense of this or whatever. Um, they just tell me, but I'm like, do you, um, but like, if it seems like they're going to be upset about it or something, I just don't tell them and I just do it. <laughs> but otherwise, like if they, if they kind of tell, I'll ask them. Uh, if you can ask if it's necessary to talk about something. Yeah. If it is, then I might bring it up. I don't, I don't usually ask guys very much. <laughs> That's where the problem's coming from. Um, yeah, so like if there is something that needs to be brought up or whatever, then I don't ask. But if it's like some dude that doesn't seem to want to just have a test in the first place, kind of closed off, I probably won't say his name. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I've had a couple of times where it's probably been three or four times where I'm like, something effective. I'm pretty sure this is emotionally driven. I'm not telling the patient this, but I'm like, oh, we're going to fix this, and it's supposed to bring your back muscles back on because they shut off again. And in the middle of treatment, this happened twice with diff different individuals, but they just break down crying. They're like, I don't know what you're poking on, but I'm like, well, I, I don't know why it, it emerges like this, but they just start breaking down on the table. It's happened twice in the last probably month. Okay. And then you use them on how to bring those things up because he does a lot of that. It depends on uh, if you want them to know or not. Okay. Uh, a lot of times people will put their hand on their forehead if there's an emotion. Okay. You can just have them put their hand on their forehead? Yeah, or they'll do it themselves. And that's usually oh. an in. So I do a hand okay. So, yeah. I'm just going to do a quick hand mode, or you can just ask a question. What's the hand mode for emotion? I just like that. On the tip? Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, I do. So, for me, instead of just like asking the body question, I do a lot of hand modes. Okay. Um, like a lot of like Beard Dolls original work. Right. It just. For me, it makes more sense than asking a question. I, yeah, I mean, my understanding is, as long as you can uh, can give a clear question to be able to receive a clear answer. Yeah, that's that's how I understand it. And if hand modes make sense, I depending on what's going on, I will often use hand modes. Yeah, that I know. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm like, okay, this is making sense. Just give me a question. A answer me this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for me, also, I, I use hand mode just for, like, a patient. That way they're like, well, why are you pulling like this? Why are you pulling like this? I'm like, oh, I'm just doing different hand modes so I can, like, show them something as well. Okay. Instead of them, like, well, what the heck are you doing? Sure. <clears throat> sure. It just feels better to me. I'm not saying that there's anything the matter with doing any of them, but. 
Right, right. New patients, I'll typically do hand modes. I still, with a new patient, will often show them priority and just to get the concept down of this is what's going on in your body. And my goal is to reset some of these functions. So on the, on the first visit, I almost always treat a muscle just to establish the, the concept of inhibition. Yeah. So I do a lot. So like even with the emotions, I probably do emotion on somebody every visit, every day. Oh, okay. Least. So it just depends on what's going on. I'll either use MPI stuff or I'll do what's a technique called neuroemotional technique on them. Okay. I've heard of that one, but don't know much about it <clears throat> outside of what they talk about in school. I mean, it's about all of its organ relationships too. Oh, okay. So like, for example, gallbladder has to do with resentment. Liver has to do with anger, frustration. Lungs have to do with grief. So there's a whole bunch of different things that kind of show up and somebody has it. Depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll just be like, oh, yeah, hey, uh, I'm just going to test something really quick, and I kind of just go through things. Okay. Do you, we got a copy of all uh, these hand modes from Beardo? Yeah, it's in the book that I don't have access to anymore because I moved. <laughs> do, you, oh. do you want a copy? Actually, sure. I want all those, bone fracture, I mean, your disc, all that stuff. Because we can just scan it in and, like, Send it over to you, like, on his PDF or something. That'd be great. That, you can also just out. assign your own hand modes, too. That's, yeah, that's what uh, Dr. Farron was telling in the beginning when we didn't really have hand modes for NPI nor for uh, uh, not reactive. Uh, I, I, have, I have NPI hand modes, and I have, I don't know, I have, like, 50 hand modes now that I'm up yeah. to. Okay. Uh, sign different things for how I'm going to get into the body. Right. And that's what I understand as just, you need to be clear with the question. And so even if it's a hand mode that's different than someone else's, it's you being clear with what your intention of the question is. Exactly. <clears throat> cool. I cool. think that would come into play would just be a, it, it's a confidence factor. Like yeah. with and saying he's he's right absolutely that you can just assign your own just like you're saying but if you're in the individual that you're kind of like second guessing yourself yeah but is it really asking that then the confidence factor is if you're using beard all stuff every nobody questions that beard all was obviously gifted sure. um, and so if you're doing something like that then that could help take your own little personal questioning yourself out of it by using right. that makes sense that's where it comes that's where it could be valuable but there'll be some people who already have the confidence that it's not even valuable. Like for Dr. Bennett, honestly, and it doesn't really mean anything because he's totally a hundred percent like, yes, I'm confident in the, in the mode that I just assigned. So he's right. going to, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <clears throat> use. You know, I need to use some of them as we teach things. I'm just adding one that's already there. Confidence thing, right? Because right? if someone's never used one before, to oh, make up your own, then they're gonna be like, oh, okay. you right. know what I mean? Like, okay, maybe it's yeah. better. Well, it's just like, I mean, I teach the ones that you kind of did for yeah. those, you know, because I'm like, oh, it works. Yeah, originally, like, <laughs> even with the MPI, like, just asking the body questions, sometimes it's like, <clears throat> I think about it in like a teaching perspective. It's like, how are you gonna just tell somebody? It's like, oh yeah, ask the body this, ask the body this, ask the body this, you know? It's like, I think at the beginning we might have to do. So there's like a physical together so that people can kind of grasp onto it until maybe they understand how to be like, hey, yeah, I could just do this, I could do this, I could do this. Yeah, that's why I bring up priority in the very first visit, just to show them the concept of inhibition. So that we can show them how weird, weird we really are. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times, I'm sure you guys get it still too, but it's so often that people are like, you know, I don't even know. I, I know that you explain and you do a very good job of telling me, but I can hear all the words that come out of your mouth and I still just think, how? <laughs> yeah. I have to remember being in AK club when I was in chiropractic school and one of our mm. professors, he's an AK diplomat and he just got a piece of paper and he wrote, I don't even remember what he wrote, but he wrote like virus on it and he put it on this girl's chest and then he told me, he's like, oh yeah, you show up for this virus and like, half the people ended up leaving because they're like, oh, I don't believe in that crap. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, I know not to do that now. <laughs> but I was like, well, it's like, yeah, it's the same as the vials, you know? It's like the vials have an electronic energy. So it's like, okay. 
I suppose that he was very clear in the question he was asking. Maybe that. Yeah. Well, like I don't, already... I don't know how I feel about that uh, fully, but I, I get the the idea. It's like asking the body a question, you know. It's like, yeah, like, being clear yeah. with your question. Agreed. It's like him, you can look at anybody and probably say virus, and something's going to show up because we're exposed to something on a regular basis. So. Yeah. But it was just like I just remember that, and then like half the people was like, "All right, I'm out." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." Not gonna do that one. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Next up it is we got a couple more retinal ganglion. One more retinal ganglion cell and then an amacrine cell. Did you see the video made about those? I haven't. I've been smashed with all sorts of other stuff and I haven't been able to watch any of your videos. I've watched one of the ones you have. I've only been able to get to one of them. Well, when you did a quick update, and at the end, I kind of just mapped out the retina. The RGC basically becomes the optic nerve, and that's where everything's kind of come together. The amacrine cell is one of those that brings the bipolar neurons together before putting them onto the retina. So it's one of the compressing factors. You are, you are, or integrate input from multiple different kind of photoreceptors and so. okay. this is cool. um, um I just say go watch that real quick for because at least you can skip to the end and it's like a five minute explanation or something and a cool ones here, that reporter's been piecing together. So, what you needed? Uh, so we had all the pretty much all the sinus vertebral nerves for the lumbar vertebrae. So, mm -hmm. I have a few patients that are having similar symptoms with the cervical spine. So, we have to find out the sinus vertebral nerves for C5, C6, and C7. So, yeah, I'm talking. that's pretty fun. So, um, I actually haven't used it yet. I know Dr. Farron's used it a couple of times and had some cool results. Where are the cervical spine uh, sinus vertebrals? Are they currently in the document? No, they will be before you start work today. So. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, all I know, I didn't see any, there was what, C5, was it Basie vertebral, I think was in there a while ago? I don't think so. I don't think we had any cervical ones. Yeah, so this oh, is, there was something I thought. It's a, a C3, C4 appropriate spinal tract. Like we've oh, had that in there for a long time. There's technically one of those for every single level. We just right. Further than that. <laughs> right. I remember. I remember when you guys found that. You're like, oh no. <laughs> I told you, Mike. It's a complicated system. Your list gets bigger. You're like, oh, we're making it smaller. No, you're making it bigger. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it literally get put under spinal nerves in the same section as as the other ones. So perfect. I had a patient who has like multiple herniated discs in her cervical spine, and she's getting distraction like once or twice a week for like a year or more, and you know, pain always came back within a week. So you're able to get her out of pain really for the most part. Um, yeah, but in there, but she's ended up coming in like once a month, and was. We've been holding together for quite a while, but every time I tested her, one arm was just weak. Just her right arm was always weak. We um, did one of those, and not anymore. And, and it stayed that way. So it wasn't just that visit; it was the next one and the next one. But that's awesome. So that'll help maintain a lot of the progress that we made, and I think it'll make what I did a whole lot shorter too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have to do it because it, it, it took a while to get her, but it, she had a lot of problems. But that actually made me think of a patient who who has complete tricep paralysis. Oh. There's still hypertrophy of the muscle, but there's no strength in them. Like I don't know how that works. That means it's got to be inhibited because otherwise there'd be atrophy if there was no neurological input, right? So it hasn't atrophied. It's been like that for two years. What? Yeah. Yeah. He's a 
he's a stunt man. <laughs> this guy's a stunt man. He's the the stunt double for Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pine, and Chris Pratt. Like What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, you heard me. <laughs> what about the, Chris Pratt? I, I I see the stunt double for Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pine, and Chris Pratt. Oh, you too. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he lives here in St. George and travels out to California when it's time for. He's been in Wonder Woman. He's been in Captain. He's been in most of the Marvel movies as the stunt double for these guys. <laughs> Anyways, during one of these stunt doubles, um, he had a significant injury. What three or four years ago? To his neck, had a bulging disc, uh, significant concussion, loss of consciousness for almost thirty minutes, and we've been messing all sorts of stuff. Concussion. And then he mentioned, well, I've also got some shoulder weakness. My tricep doesn't work. And so we've done probably three different treatments on the tricep. And his medial head is back 100%. His lateral head is about a 50% contraction. And his, um, long, oh, no, opposite. His medial head, yes. His lung head has about 50% contraction. His lateral head has just no function at all. So I don't know if the, I've been waiting for the cervical nerve root because I assume that would have significant impact on it, but the disc should as well, because the disc is what caused the problem in, in the first place from what the MRI claimed. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fun to kind of hear what your result is. Yeah. He's a fun guy to treat. He's a character. <laughs> All right. And then we got, uh, two treatments for the lens of the eye. Okay. You guys have hit an eye hard then recently. Yeah, so I had a patient who had uh, optic nerve cancer as a kid. So she's pretty optic good. nerve what? Cancer. Oh. Oh. So they got it out, but she's like mostly blind, you know, I can't differentiate colors and bad. Anyway, so she came in, so she comes every two or three months because she lives out of state. So she comes and sees her dad, and then he brings her here. So um, that's what pretty much all of these retinal ganglia cells and stuff were for in the first place. Um, now she can differentiate colors, and she can differentiate them. It had to be like this close. Um, and she can see probably triple distance, which is pretty cool, but I mean, this is where she had to be before to read like this big. <laughs> so now she can read that. You know, six feet away or something. But, uh, and she likes art, you know, so she likes painting things. She's like, I actually paint white clouds now. Things like that. And then that really horrible for me. So we did this with the rods are for, and then we got these. And the lens thing, I imagine, is going to take a while. So I don't know how it's going to be changed. Because that was the last thing we've done in the she back. So, right on that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then same guy brought in a friend who got shingles in his optic nerves and lost vision in 40, sorry, 75% of his eye, maybe 80%. But treated, because he's from Vegas, so he just came in one time and we increased it from like this much vision to about here before he left. I said he could differentiate colors, and then I asked him some questions, and he could not differentiate colors at all. <laughs> then he's doing a little better. That was good. <laughs> Interesting. This has been pretty cool. You've got cool ones to share. Oh, just to the thing, the, the rods and cones, are changed and renewed every 12 days. So that means even with treatment, yes, you'll notice now an improvement, but you should also in the next 12 days as they regenerate correctly. Yeah. That's cool. Which means, hey, color blindness really shouldn't be a big deal. And I don't yeah. think anyone I feel like we could probably handle most any of them. Maybe we have to do the, uh, find something for the regeneration as well. Uh, maybe for some of them, maybe like the... Like a cell type? Well, we're doing cell types. So I think it just happens on its own. Oh, okay. Been doing that so far. 
So we have to find an instance where it doesn't. I'll find out the exact day where it replaces itself after 12 days. And... Does it mean you'll have some overlapping every day, right? Because it's not like all of, them, all of them every 12 days all at once, you know. But they're rolling over that often. So I'm like, things are going to change and improve and whatnot. Pretty regular. Uh, Red Note Gangly says, I pretty much only have for the more intense light, too. I haven't gotten below that blue green barrier. Anyway, that seems to be where most of the problems lie, though. But I mean, I'll get down to if we need to. I mean, when we, I guess it's just on the list. But, um, got two more mild kinds. You got which ones? So there's the deep neck again, but this one's the fiberglass extracellular matrix production okay. division. Um, they're done to my point. Um, an interesting thing I learned last night is how much how much ligaments play a role in motor inhibition and facilitation. So there's these reflexes from the ligaments to the muscles based on their tension and whatnot. So a lot of that relationship on how they're acting. Right? And then they're kind of talking about how much that effect. Okay. And then they gave an example of Odell Beckham Jr. tearing his ACL the second time. Anything? So I asked Kelly, was like, uh, how long have they been treating him? Was it before or after the second ACL tear? He said it was before. But he hadn't been like, how did he just blow that all of a sudden? Okay. I'm like, well. Maybe because there wasn't that back between the two. And that could be part of it. And I wonder if this would be the way to do that, actually. Um, hmm. That's either on somebody who's, you know, old guy, stiff everywhere, right? All the muscles are just like rocks. Uh, and I've treated muscles, lots of them, and those sorts of things. Yeah, improvements in there, but it's like they still never let go, which is weird because they normally do. Um, so I treated this one on him, and his neck actually felt. Ooh, like loose. This is stiff, but I was like, I don't think I've ever felt that on him. Mm. That was kind of uh, nice little leading into it there. So if you got anyway, um, ligament damage, degeneration, and that kind of stuff. Extracellular. Uh, and then the next one is posterior forearm and hand. <clears throat> yes, thank you. I've had some serious tennis elbow stuff, and I'm like, okay, the, I. I'm going to have to do with aim it here for now until, because red nucleus is some, but. Don't get too excited. It's the immune division. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got probably two or three people with lateral epicondylitis. We've made good improvement, but I'm like, we just need that myokine. <laughs> <laughs> so that one um, is, we'll get into like rheumatoid arthritis and all this stuff. In the, hands. in the elbow and the hands, and then that's a pretty heavy spot is in the hands. So yeah. I got something in that situation. So a lot of things have helped, and this is the next thing that's needed. So that's why that one kind of got pushed up to the top. <laughs> on that, Jack, one of the one of the things that I've finally huge change. Like, I think that one would be big. You could get the myocardial on for that too. But it's taking away a lot of the form and stuff like that. Is uh, if you go and you clear out all the cuneate nucleuses, there's three of them. And then the cuneocerebellars. When I originally thought cuneocerebellars is shoulder motion, it's the entire arm motion because it's the cuneate nucleus to the cerebellum, which coordinates the movement for them all to work together. And so yeah. that when I treat that, it's, it's been significant change for all elbow, you know, I don't care if it's lateral, the condylitis, medial, doesn't matter. It's like, wow, that's a lot better. I still okay. agree. I think the myokine, the muscle aspect, it would be awesome. But if you haven't looked at those yet, I, I'll bet you could help them with that too. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'll look at that one. He's only come in two or th probably two or three times. But I know that one of the, I was telling you earlier this summer, I was treating bull riders. I did the the flexor of the myokine for the, the wrist flexor. And he's like, dude, of the five, no, uh, of the, no, the six um, rodeos he's been in, he's had such strength in his forearm that he's only lost one time. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> he's got significant strength in his forearm now to keep him on that bull. 
<laughs> and I haven't seen him in probably two months because his his family still sends me people. They're like, oh, just go over to Dr. Hall and they'll fix a bunch of stuff. And so I still get people. They're sending me people, but they're like, no, we're too busy. We, you know, just in rodeo season until December now. So I'm like, well. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see if the end. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to see if that still holds up. They, they I, I have yet to be officially written on that train if you will <clears throat> uh, the bull riding championship yeah in vegas i was invited and i got my temporary license for vegas um i just said hey i'm ready on my end now what else do i have to do and um, they were on a, a cattle drive so they haven't gotten back to me yet <clears throat> all right that's still cool. yet to happen right. yeah yeah and Next one he mentioned already was the pituitary TSH production. Okay. That's a good one. That'll be on the Oregon Dock because it's got VORs and stuff. Sure. And on the testes, Lady Cells, testosterone production. Test I was going to say that's T. Good news. You don't have to touch the testicle or the scrotum at all. <laughs> that's <laughs> good. <laughs> It's the pubic bone, like pretty, you know, just right above it. But um, it's kind of like the inguinal canal where it all kind of descended in the first place. That's basically. Yeah. Cool. But uh, yeah, just need you up to that. Anyway, so there's that. That one's another long one, but pretty awesome. I'm yet to treat the whole thing. Idiot. Um, no, the patient speaking the next Monday, and I'll treat it for him. Cool. I've got a patient who. Um, has had like chronic headaches since he was like 12 and he's like 26. And so, um, the only thing that seemed to help him was, uh, pituitary LH production. And that's the only thing that helped him. So, but then he kind of slipped back after like a month of no headaches, he kind of started to slip back a little bit. So that's why we went into here to see if that would help. So we'll see on next week if that helps, but anyway, cool. Testosterone production. So there's that. And there's a thing called the Nexus Glia. Doctor. Yeah, we talked about that last month. Yeah. You remember that? Not tons. If I took notes on it, they're in my office. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember it happened in there. Anyway, that'll be coming up. That's another super long one. Like, uh, you'll be able to see it. Yes, three of them. It's like three minutes in one. The last two is a. Emotional con, um, comp has that to do with the whole central nervous system of the entire heart. So, yeah, oh, that's pretty cool. That's a cool idea. I've done it on like three patients, but I don't know. I did it on one. The thing has before we found out she had this chronic fungal infection causing all of her blood pressure seizures problems. <clears throat> yeah. Anything else, anybody? Um, working on getting a much more organized and simplistic version or way of uh, mental health conditions. You see things kind of popping up here and there. Um, once it's all organized for the most part, then I'll do a video on it and talk about how to work between each of them. Uh, it should really make anxiety, depression, and ADHD, and OCD, and everything like that a lot more uh, simple. You, you know, you'd understand it at least upon watching the video and then it takes some practice, you know what I mean? But 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What's that? Awesome. Well, I got to get cooking. I got to get on the road. <clears throat> so thanks for the update. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya.